Good morning, everyone. This is Rev Kev coming to you from Bloom in the Desert Ministries, United Church of Christ in Palm Springs, California. I'm coming to you now live from our uh, chapel, Bloom Chapel in Palm Springs. And uh, we're sorry for the little bit of a technical glitch that went on at the beginning. Um, <clears throat> not to get all carried away in explaining that, but sometimes there's a tug of war between Zoom and Facebook Live when it comes to pre recorded music. And uh, what we were trying to play for you was last year's um, Chinese New Year Dragon coming into the service at the very beginning of the service. And you saw how it got interrupted there and, and so forth. Um, and so we're trying to play that. And then you saw the photo of me leaving last year's Mardi Gras Sunday um, uh, service. And we have a <clears throat> situation this year where those two Sundays, as well as a plethora of others, are uh, merged in this day, which of course we all know is really Valentine's Day. So um, it's important for us to know that uh, we're trying to stay relevant here at Bloom in the Desert Ministries as a uh, United Church of Christ and Reconciling Ministries congregation. And we're also keeping in mind those memories that are precious to us from the pre-COVID days, which, uh, you know, we, we still hold on to. So just wanted to have a little fun there at the beginning. And, um, uh, and, 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 you know, we got most of it done. So it's, it's good to be with you today. We welcome you to our service. Uh, this is also in the Christian tradition. This is called Transfiguration Sunday. And we'll be talking more about that a little bit later in the service. We have our candle is lit on the worship center today uh, as a part of our symbol of Christ, the light of the world being in our midst. We always recommend to folks, if you wish, that you may light a candle in uh, your own worship setting there where you are and join us in this bringing the light of the world uh, into being in our many, many and different various ways. Um, we know that Jesus said you are the light of the world as uh, in the scriptures that we have given to us through the ages. And in the midst of that, that tells us that when, when, a, when the light that we have is extinguished at the end of our service, it really doesn't go out because you are the light of the world wherever you are taking this uh, ministry, this illumination, this message of love for everyone out wherever you go. We as the United Church of Christ do our very best to live up to the modern motto of whoever you are and wherever you are on the journey of faith, you are welcome here. And so it is our desire to be open and affirming uh, and, and welcoming people as you see yourself from the inside out rather than an identity that we would foist upon you. We know that people love one another as uh, gay people, lesbian people, bisexual people. We know that people identify as cisgender, gender non-binary, transgender, gender non-declaring. And in all of these ways, it's our desire to basically be in ministry with you as your most authentic self. And that's the way in which we want to be connected. We also know we come from a wide variety of backgrounds and perspectives, and that's just a part of the UCC, the United Church of Christ, as well as the world today in many churches. We have a variety of religious and spiritual traditions that are a part of and practices that are a part of our congregation, as well as financial status, educational status, political perspectives, and all of that. And, ge and now geography. So we uh, are, are just wanting to be together in this online community as we are today. And yet I know that people are already doing this because I see Mike is uh, taking the notes there on the other side of the camera with me. Uh, he is over there taking notes of the uh, prayer requests that people are putting down, which you're welcome to do. Just keep in mind that it is a public uh, forum, so you want to do that. We'll offer those later in the service. And you also may want to please greet us and tell us, uh, you know, who you are, where you are, if you will, and that you're with us. If this is your very first time and you feel comfortable doing so, please make that note. And uh, we just want to be sure and be able to welcome you as best we can. We're grateful today that uh, we have as participating in our worship service as our liturgists and readers and prayers, 
Uh, we have uh, Dr. Paul and Reverend Dr. Sally Burton, who are here with us from their home in San Bernardino. Mike Shear is here with me in the office. Mindy Harrington is uh, with us uh, as one of our worship leaders as she is over in Desert Hot Springs um, and uh, across the desert and uh, you know just this side of the San Andreas Fault. Um, and we're grateful for our musicians today as uh, Dr. Dennis Marine is with us this morning and, and uh, Ken Forney, our, our Bloom Music Director and the Bloom Tones Trio, J.R. Rash, Rod Rash Clausen and Brian Herman are with us in Cathedral City. So here we are, uh, you know, together and you are with us wherever you are and we're grateful that you're there. The flowers on our worship table this morning are symbolic of the living Christ and offered to the glory of God by Pete and Mindy Harrington in celebration of their 46th wedding anniversary and their 53 years of being together. And we send our love and prayers and, uh, and uh, good, good, good vibes to Pete and Mindy as they enjoy their lives together. Um, we note that today after our worship service is our annual meeting, uh, the Bloom Annual Meeting. It will be on Zoom. It will be in the same location as typically is. Uh, the Zoom link is our hospitality Zoom link, and that is in Bloom Notes, which came out on Friday. Um, and you are welcome. All persons attending have voice, uh, and members and associate members have vote. Uh, and we look forward to that meeting as we uh, consider our uh, how we're going to best be in ministry uh, as well as we can and as well as we can envision and we're thankful for what we have done in the past as we are together in this uh, annual meeting uh, after our worship today. Uh, please see also available in the uh, Bloom Notes on a regular basis is the uh, printout or you have a link to be able to print out if you want or just link to it uh, of, of the uh, bulletin for participating in the worship service, the liturgy, the order of service, that also has other announcements uh, that are involved in it. I want to include also, I overlooked, and I just want to include that Elaine Wong Meyerhofer is also one of our music musicians today, as she brings uh, music from uh, the, the Chinese tradition. And you will note that uh, one of our hymns is from a Chinese tradition. We are also in this um, Black History Month trying to um, honor uh, the, the heritage and also um, use or you know benefit from certain aspects of black culture as in our music in our prayers and so forth and we're very grateful for the care that Dr. Dennis Marine and his piano selections today uh, has done to be appropriate for, for Black History Month for Mardi Gras Sunday um, and all of these ways we're really grateful for Dennis's uh, uh, participation in that way. One more thing. This Sunday, uh, wait, this Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live, this location, no need to go anywhere else, right here, Facebook Live, uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Stephen Wales will be leading us in our annual Ash Wednesday uh, service. So let's join together on Facebook Live here at Bloom in the Desert Ministries UCC Facebook page, as well as we'll be sharing it on a few others uh, and join together in beginning our Lenten journey uh, as we uh, have our Ash Wednesday service together at 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. So now is the time for us to transition into being the worshiping community. We've gathered together in this way as people have done for centuries and centuries. We bring our heart and soul and mind and strength together for the worship of God and caring for one another. Our music of centering played by Dr. Dennis Marine is, If Ever I Cease to Love. It is followed by our call to worship and other prayers led by um, Dr. Paul and Reverend Dr. Sally Burton.
please join us in our responsive call to worship. As God shared our humanity in Jesus, God presented a new version of power. God confronted the love of power with the power of love. Power is not meant to be used to dominate. Power is meant to serve. We gather today to celebrating God's realm as love in our souls and actions. Love, love is, is the real, real gift of God's spirit, spirit among us. us. Loving God, creator of all people and places, we offer hope and thanksgiving. Shalom, Shalom. Salam, Salam, Ping on, pause, peace, peace. Amen. amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Rise to Greet the Sun, led by our music director, Ken Forney, and the Bloom Tones Trio. The music may be found on your song sheets. a time in our worship when in faith we open our hearts to ministry with our prayer for good and growth. Let us pray using this ancient poem, aware of its present call upon us. If there is to be peace in the world, there, there must, must be, be peace, peace in, in the, the nations. nations. If there is to be peace in the nations, there, there must, must be peace, peace in, in the, the cities. cities. If there is to be peace in the cities, there, there must, must be, be peace between, between neighbors. neighbors. If there is to be peace between neighbors, there must, there be, must peace be peace in, in the, the home. home. If there is to be peace in the home, there, there must, must be peace, peace in, in the, the heart. heart. Eternal source of love and creativity, receive now our silent prayers. To all our silent prayers, let the people say, Amen. Amen. Receive now these words of encouragement. If you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. 
If you, if you want, want happiness, happiness for a day, day go, go fishing. fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. If you, if you want, want happiness for a lifetime, help, help someone else. else. Amen. Amen. Let, Let us, us now receive, receive the word. word. Please join our musicians in singing our response, followed by our Hebrew scripture reading presented by Mike Shear. Our Hebrew scripture reading is from Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. Yahweh our God speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Yahweh comes and won't be silent. A devouring fire goes before God, while storms rage all around. God summons heaven and earth to the trial of God's people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who make their covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens affirm God's justice, because it is God who is the judge? Selah. Here ends the Hebrew scripture reading. Elaine Wong Meyerhofer will now present some special music in honor of Chinese New Year, followed by Mindy Harrington presenting our gospel reading. Good morning, Bloomers. Happy Lunar New Year of the Ox. These are two very sweet, maybe bittersweet songs from my childhood. Um, I love them and uh, they have a very sweet sentiment. So here goes. The first one is called Rainbow Sister and the second one is uh, The Sweet Bird of Youth. That was beautiful. Thank you. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. 
Six days after that, Jesus took Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain where they could all be alone. And there Jesus was transfigured before their eyes. The clothes Jesus wore became dazzling white, whiter than any earthly bleach could make them. Elijah appeared to them, as did Moses, and the two were talking with Jesus. Then Peter spoke to Jesus, Rabbi, he said, how wonderful it is for us to be here. Let us make three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what he was saying, so overcome were they all with awe. Then a cloud formed, overshadowing them, and there came a voice from out of the cloud, This is my beloved, my own. Listen to this one. Then suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, only Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus gave the orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until after the promised one had risen from the dead. Here ends the reading of the gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our commentary today will be presented by the Reverend Dr. Kevin A. Johnson. Thank you for very much for that reading of the gospel, Mindy. Thank you, Elaine, for the beautiful traditional poems. And thank you, Mike, for the reading of the Hebrew scriptures. Let us pray. Loving God, we are grateful for this time together in worship, and we are thankful for everyone who is coming together in order to have this occurrence in our lives. We're grateful for the way in which your word comes to us through the ages and through one another every day. Bless us as we continue so that the word that you have for each of us is what we are able to sort through and receive among all of the words that surround us. Bless us in this time with your anointing as we join with people of the ages who have brought their heart and soul and minds and strength together to worship you, to hear your word, and to pray as the psalmist did so long ago, that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth will be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. And the word that came to me while I was praying that is don't forget to acknowledge that uh, actually the Bloom Tones Trio is the Bloom Tones Quartet today. And we're grateful that uh, Phyllis Ramsey is able to join the group there in Cathedral City and, and uh, uh, bring her soprano voice to uh, enhance uh, the tones uh, that are reaching us through, uh, through these uh, online services. You know, this uh, is annual meeting day at annual meeting Sunday at Bloom. Uh, it is Mardi Gras Sunday, as we've already acknowledged. It is Valentine's Day. Uh, in case you didn't remember or, or someone didn't remember and needs to take care of that before sundown. Uh, it is Chinese New Year Sunday, as we've been acknowledging in our desire to be uh, a multicultural congregation. And connected with that as well is uh, this is the second Sunday in Black History Month as we are uh, honoring as, as we can in such a way that does not appropriate culture, but honors uh, the gifts of culture that are with us as well as the members of our congregation uh, who are a part of the Black community. Uh, we also know that this is the Sunday of President's Day weekend. Some people are off tomorrow. There's no mail tomorrow in case you were expecting a check. So don't, uh, you know, we, we all, we, 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 it's a big day. And this is one of those years when all of this comes together and we can do our best to acknowledge it because we're a part, we're in the world, even if we, as, uh, you know, a tradition talk about not being of the world. Uh, so what more could we ask? in this time? Well, you guessed it. It's Transfiguration Sunday. Yay! So in the wake of our ancient faith stories, miracles and signs in our day are often greeted with cynicism. 
the cynicism of modern science and smugness uh, of uh, poo-pooing that I could never believe in that sort of thing. The mountaintop experience we envision today is often discounted uh, as historical hocus pocus, spiritual shenanigans by the very same people who are astonished by a Star Wars movie. On top of this mountain of special days, we come to the transfiguration story and wonder how we people of the 21st century are supposed to take it seriously. Well, that's it. That's just it. We take it seriously, but not literally. Today, we jump ahead in our gospel readings. We've been going small section by small section by small section by small section through the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark for the last uh, three weeks. And today we find ourselves in the ninth chapter, jumped all the way ahead. The funny thing about that is that these markings and delineations of chapters and verses, even periods and commas, didn't eat or exclamation points, didn't even exist in, the, in, in what we would understand to be original scrolls in the original language. It didn't exist when the author took the name of Mark uh, and, and first began to compile uh, these sources from their own set of understandings as well as from another source that is uh, called Q that uh, was way before the QAnon now, it was the Q source for the Gospel of Mark. And the prox, and you know what, that source was anonymous too, but that's ancient, long time ago. The approximation of the story in the midst of this gospel probably was random. It just was put there. So the lectionary compilers who provide guidance for our Bible stories, for our church services on a weekly basis, and give this to us now, this Sunday. They do it because this in the cycle of the storytelling is building a case for the ultimacy of Jesus in the midst of God's prophets and in God's reconciliation attempts for humanity and in God's love letters for earthlings. In this transfiguration story, with Jesus chatting with and then leaving Elijah and Moses behind, and then emerging from the clouds with the best possible job reference from God, and then keeping it a secret till he would be gone, in this story we have the amazing testimony that for us, Jesus will be all we need. In our Christian heritage, The arrival of Jesus has religious and political implications. Anyone who says you can't mix religion and politics has not read the Bible. Maybe they've read it, but they don't get it. And maybe they take it literally, but not seriously. The more informed and relational statement for a person to make is this religion gives me pause and cause to rethink my politics. But what they're probably saying in the first place is, my political viewpoint is more comfortable and more important than this religion. In the earliest days of our religion, while establishing the credibility of the Christian disciples and the credibility of the Christ, they probably the credibility of the Christ needed shoring up, both religiously and politically. When Jesus did not come back shortly after the resurrection and ascension into heaven, it's understandable that doubts arose among the believers and non-believers alike. It is clear in this story that Jesus was being spun up to equal footing with Moses and Elijah. These are whom we know as two of the great prophetic heroes of the Jewish heritage. The writer of Mark was putting Jesus at their level and then going one better. While Moses and Elijah are gone, Jesus comes back and he too has been spoken to by God. In this case, while Moses and Elijah 
at times had been in royal courts, Jesus had not yet been recognized in this way. And the only time he ever got there was in the uh, trial before the crucifixion. So when we see and remember who Jesus just hung out with, we believe that we see his credibility rising for the believers and the uh, prospects on both the political and religious levels. Now the political was nothing like we might be thinking along the lines of that Jesus would, uh, would, would like hold an office, something like that. Instead, it was defining whom the people would pay homage. Will it be Emperor Caesar as Lord and son of the silent Roman God? Or will it be Jesus as the vocal God's beloved, God's own, the one to be listened to? Mark was working to advance Jesus. And that is still our Jesus-centered mission, not only to follow, but to advance. Since this is the Sunday of President's Day weekend, I suppose it is appropriate to reflect on the 46 presidents of the United States and wonder who we would pay homage to. For some of us, recent feelings may be way too raw for such an exercise. But maybe it is appropriate to see that every president is always living in the shadow of the ones who went before. And for a long time in our history, George Washington was the largest shadow casting figure. Yes, Washington was far from perfect. And he was a slave owner, like many of the forebears, many of our founders. Again, Washington was not perfect, but many of the legislators who followed his term tried to make him so. Maybe you've seen some of the statues that were carved or uh, proposed and presented him in the category of being like a Roman god. He had a lot of Peters who wanted to build monuments and in some cases, they wanted to build him political shelters of devotion and honor to keep him around as some sort of non-royal king. But George Washington sought to keep his political humanity intact. Let's just say Washington established the president, the precedent of peaceful transition of power, which we believe in and used to think we were able to expect. I heard on the radio Friday that tomorrow in the Senate, the practice of reading George Washington's farewell address will take place. Yesterday, I read that the senators wanted to get home by Valentine's Day, so I'm not sure that anybody will be there to hear the reading, but I think it will be read and heard nonetheless. It's ranked pretty highly among historical documents. Many people see it as important as the Gettysburg Address. It is a document of someone who is leaving a position of leadership, trying to be reassuring to those left behind and encouraging people to maintain values and good practices in the future. Unlike Jesus, George Washington didn't say to keep it a secret. So I want to share just a few lines of it with us today. One paragraph says this, observe good faith and justice toward all nations, cultivate peace and harmony with all. Religion and morality enjoin this conduct. And can it be that good policy does not equally enjoin it? It will be worthy of a free enlightened, and at no distant period, a great nation to give to mankind the magnanimous and too novel example of a people always guided by an excellent justice and benevolence. 
who can doubt that in the course of time and things, the fruits of such a plan would richly repay any temporary advantages which may be lost by a steady adherence to it. Can it be that providence has not connected the permanent felicity of a nation with its vir virtue? The experiment at least is recommended by every sentiment that emboldens human nature. Now, George Washington was not a religious leader, but his political language was infused with the values that his ascribed Episcopal faith taught him. It will be good when we can trust again that our leaders are filled with values such as we hold dear in faith. I just wonder how many people today would celebrate or cringe at the historical notion that the United States of America constitutional government was intentionally formed as a liberal democracy. It's my opinion that the so-called originalists of today have lost faith with the values of George Washington. But that chat is for another time. We who call ourselves Christians, and if not Christians, we who call ourselves bloomers and friends, stand in the shadow of great leaders from historic times and ancient religious times. It's our task to carry the mantle entrusted to us. In our case, it is a mantle that bases everything we do on loving one another and loving ourselves. This is something for us to hold others to account. And it is certainly something for others to hold us to account. That's how we will continue faithfully on the journey. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning will be Go Down Moses, led by music director Ken Forney and the Bloom Tones Quartet. The music may be found on your song sheets, and Ken has a word for us just before we get started. Ken? Lead us on. Uh, we're going to be singing the verses uh, 1st, 6th, 7th, and 11th.
to let my people go. Oh, let us all from bondage flee. Let my people go. And let us all in Christ be free. Let my people go. Go down, Moses. Now is the time in our service when we join together our hearts and minds in prayer. We offer our concerns and our joys and thanksgivings. We are uh, grateful for those that have been uh, written in the comments section that we've been able to note as best possible and we will uh, offer those um, now. Please also continue to keep in mind your own prayers of your heart and soul and and uh, you know we are joining you in that way it's in this time of prayer not that we do magic or um, anything that is uh, uh, particularly um, you know uh, uh, well I'll just say magical it's that we are joined in what uh, um, uh, people call the thin place we are joined in a place where uh, we can all have a sense of spiritual connectedness uh, and that is, you know, from, from one of us to the next person sitting near to the people around the world. So let us now be in this time of prayer as we offer our concerns and our joys. I will offer those and then there will be a brief moment of silence. And then we will all say it together aloud, God receive our prayer. Let us pray. For the family and friends in England and around the world of Andrew Lumpkin, who passed away unexpectedly last Sunday, we pray. We pray for good results from Cousin Jane's doctor appointment on Thursday. We pray for Bob and Ray's friend, Alice, whose husband passed away last night, and for Nancy Catherine, who fell and required surgery this week. We offer prayers for Earl Perry's friend, Delon, who fell and broke his wrist. Prayers for Ed Spann and his recovery and for husband Ramon caring for him at home. And we pray traveling mercies for John DiNapoli's travel to Washington DC on Tuesday. And together we say, God, receive our prayer. In our joys and thanksgivings, we give thanksgiving and joy and say, Happy Lunar New Year, the year of the ox. We pray blessings for Bill Wallace and Larry getting their vaccine today and for the whole Bloom family. We pray prayers of thanksgiving for Donna Lavick Wesenberg's ability to join the Bloom Ladies Zoom happy hour on Friday. We pray thanksgiving and joy for the beauty of Bloom Tones with Phyllis in the mix. And we give thanks for Elaine's beautiful music and the beautiful poems.
And together we say, God, receive our prayers. Amen. Now is the time in our worship service when we uh, remember that all that we have is a gift from God and we offer part of what we have in order to uh, support the mission, vision, and values of this congregation as well as uh, God's works of faith all around the world. We are grateful for all who have participated by sending in um, uh, contributions through the mail this week as we have those on our worship center for blessing uh, as we pray in a moment. We're also grateful that there are these ways in which we are able to continue our stewardship and offerings and generosity in support of Bloom as you're able to donate on the Bloom website, able to text a donation to the number that you see there, able to um, uh, send something to the address that you see on the, uh, the Bloom office on the screen, and that also set up automated payments through one's uh, bank or financial institution. We're grateful for all those who have done that, as well as participating in the community and online ways in which portions of shopping and such can be donated to the work and the mission, the vision values of Bloom. We receive now in this time, our offertory meditation music in honor of Chinese New Year also. And this morning it will be Little Donkey and Clay Doll sung by Elaine Wong Meyerhofer, led by the Reverend Dr. Sally Burton leading us in our prayer of dedication. The Little Donkey Song is a lesson in humility. And that is followed by the clay doll, which is a very cute little song of love. And by the way, the, historically, the clay dolls um, were a real toy for a lot of Chinese children way back. And um, they were manufactured in my father's hometown. Please join me in our prayer of dedication. Holy One, you hide not your radiance, neither hold back your word. Your word. You come to us in love, fresh as the morning. We are sustained by your mercy and renewed through your grace. You have sent us your spirit to freshen our day. All that we are, we owe to you. Accept our gifts and bless our endeavors so that all we do may be in accord with your will. 
And now please join our musicians in singing our doxology, followed by Rev Kev leading us in the prayer of Jesus. prayer of Jesus that we're praying today is a paraphrase, an alternate version, and um, let us pray along together. Beloved or God, created of all, creator of all, your name be held holy, your dominion increase among us, your wisdom be our guide, your way be our path, your will be done, at all times, in all places, on heaven as in earth. Give us the bread we need today, the manna of your promise, the taste of your tomorrow. As we release those indebted to us, so forgive our debts. Fill us with courage in the time of testing. Spare us from trials too severe to endure free us from the grip of all powers that bind. For yours is the good which evil dissolve, for yours is the good which dissolves evil. Yours is the joy that sounds through the pain. Yours is the life which swallows up death. Yours is the glory, the transfiguring light, the victory of love, for time and eternity, for age after age, amen. Please join our musicians in singing our sending hymn, Lord of the Dance. The music is found on your song sheet. As we enter the Lenten season coming up, I picked this hymn as uh, one, of, um, uh, one of the ways in which we uh, have a cultural expression of telling the story of the life of Jesus. Here we sing, Lord of the Dance. Shame. They whipped and they 
stripped and they flung me high and they left me there on a cross to die. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday and the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil in your back. They buried my body and they said I'd come. But I am the dance and I still go on. Yes, then, wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all. I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. They cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that will never, never die. I'll live in you and if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Join now together in this benediction and receive this blessing. Our worship is ended. Our service begins. What does God need from us? Simply do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Continue to serve with faith and love. Depart from this time today committed to sharing the best of yourself through extravagant generosity of time and resources meeting the needs of others, being spoken and unspoken, seen and unseen, heard and unheard. We will go now seeking justice, sharing compassion, and promoting hope in the world. My dear friends in faith, will you go from here and be the people of God in Christ's name? We, we will. will. Amen. Amen. Let us offer to one another signs of grace and peace and go in peace. Amen. 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 Peace be with you. Be with you. Amen. Amen.